Hi everyone, I'm Josh and this is Josh Wright Piano TV. Today I wanted to discuss how to gain better control over the attack uh, on the keys. Uh, I don't love the word attack because a lot of times, and especially today, we're going to be talking about how stroking the keys, like pulling back slightly, can help your key attacks to gain more control. You can get softer textures this way. And I was teaching a lesson probably a month or two ago, and I finally figured out a really nice way of explaining this. If you think of just attacking a key, or just playing a key, and playing is probably a better term, but think about how much travel you have going down. It might just be that much, you know, a centimeter or something, or a quarter or half an inch or something like that. Very, very shallow. Now, a lot of times when students need to get softer or have better control over the keys, I'll say, you know, pull out. Like so if you're playing the beginning of Mendelssohn's Serious Variations. Or, you know, along those same D minor, uh, that same key, uh, Tchaikovsky's October. Now, I'm not a huge fan of pushing into the keys, like sliding in, except in instances where uh, you you have repeated chords. So like in, in the Chopin Ballade, if you just try to play down, it, I have so much training with that piece and I've taught it 10 million times, so I have pretty good control there. But something that I do to ensure, even now in concerts when I play that, that it is whisper soft, is I'll slide in out. I can't even remember who taught me that. I think I learned it in a random master class. And the reason pushing in or pulling out, and mostly pulling out, I, that's a very Russian thing. Bob Ayan emphasized that a lot. He's like, always oh, take the key, take the sound. He didn't love the idea of pushing into the keys, but I think in these instances where you have kind of in, out, that's that can be very helpful. The reason that works is basically you're taking that and you are not only extending it down, but you're extending it out. So in a lot of ways, you are uh, extending the attack of the key. Of course you're going down the same distance. I know this is mostly a mental play explanation, but by pulling out like that, you put more surface area on the key usually because you're playing flatter. If you ever watch like Daniel Trifonov play and he's playing really soft textures, he flattens his hands like completely almost to get as much surface area on those keys as possible to give you better control. If you're on your very fingertips, that's awesome for a texture real fast like the Opus 10 number eight. Where you have to really fly, but for something like this, or even this. You just have really good control over that because you are extending that attack or that amount of time that it takes to produce the sound. And you can have greater control over the hammer speed that way than just trying to time it perfectly going down. You can get so soft doing that. It's ridiculous. That's barely audible, even to me here. I wonder if it's even picking up very much on that microphone, because the mic's pointing at my mouth. It's so soft. No, that was up. That was too low. Now I'm going to try and do that same thing just playing straight down. I might be able to do it. No. Nope. It's inconsistent. Um, and I'm not just saying that to prove my point. It really is a lot harder to do that. The last thing that I want to talk about today, and this is getting more cerebral here, but I was talking with uh, a guy from my neighborhood, and my little daughter Lola, she just turned three. Um, 
she was singing a little song for him and he said and he's a he's the choir director at our church and he said isn't it amazing that it's so innate in human beings that you can just form this sound so i'm a terrible singer hopefully this doesn't turn into a disaster here but bum i can just um, in my mind, form what tone that has to create. I can manipulate my vocal cords, so I'm not going like, um, or like, um, like I'm not having to slide into that. I can just create it in my mind, um, and then sing that. It's incredible that you can do that. The same thing applies to piano. I was teaching one of my students the other day, and he was playing. I think he was playing Sansons like uh, second concerto, first movement. Let's see if I can remember this. And then he went. And I was like, you have to form that sound in your mind if you want it to be softer. So you create the sound that you want to have come to pass or, you know, to be realized. So. this really nicely voiced D amidst a very soft texture. And then I want this F sharp to be even softer. Ah, gotta be careful. Same thing like when you're starting on Dean by Ravel from Gaspar. If you think, don't accent, don't accent, don't accent, you might accidentally hit that and <laughs> accent it. Whereas if you think, this is just going to be the most whisper soft texture. It works out nicely. So I hope today gives you more control over your sound, especially with soft textures. I'm going to leave a few links in the description below. One of them is for a free webinar with 10 of my favorite tips. If you haven't had a chance to watch that, I highly recommend checking it out. Two other links for uh, two of my paid courses if you want to take your studies even deeper than this YouTube channel offers. And then the last link is for all the gear I use in here, my lighting, the microphones, the cameras, how I uh, create my videos, and other equipment like the stuff I use for Skype lessons and beginner book recommendations. So those four links will be in the description below. If any of you have any questions, my email is josh at joshwrightpiano.com. Have a great week. Good luck in your practice sessions.